Good afternoon. It is my pleasure today to speak about a hot issue about the novel therapies for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So I'm going to highlight two important trials, Embror reduced and DABA heart failure trials. So to start with, this is the Embror reduced trial. Cardiovascular and renal outcomes with impagliflozin and heart failure. Uh, so the Embror impagliflozin outcome trial in patients with chronic heart failure and a reduced ejection fraction. It is a double blind placebo randomized controlled trial, it's the best design, conducted in 520 centers in 20 countries with a median follow up of 16 months. So more than 3,700 adult patients with class two, three, or four heart failure, NEHA, and an ejection fraction of 40% or less, reduced ejection fraction, to receive either IMBA gliflozin 10 milligram once daily or placebo, in addition to recommended and standard therapy for heart failure. In each arm, as you see, we have more than 1,800 uh, in IMBA and the placebo arm. These are the demographic characteristics of the patients in both IMBA and the placebo, age, gender, race, as you see here, many races, because this study was conducted in many countries, 20 countries, North America, Latin America, Europe, Asia, and others. And this is the NEHA classification, body mass index, blood pressure. And what I want to comment here is the percentage of very high level of BNB in the majority of patients, more than 78% of the patients had very high level of uh, NET, pro BNP. Here I'd like also to stress upon diabetes mellitus. So less than 50% of patients in both arms, either EMBA or placebo are diabetic. This means that more than 50% of the patients were non-diabetic and treated with EMBA gliflozin. And this is the estimated GFR Less than 60 milliliter per minute per adult surface area, here 48% in each arm. This means that this is a very good study addressing heart failure with patients here. If we say less than 60, this means that appreciable amount, a number of patients are in the CKD domain. These are medications either and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. And this is without neprilessin inhibitor in 70% of the cases. And neprilessin is used in 18% in EMBA and 20% in placebo. Mineral corticoid receptor antagonists and the beta blockers were used in 70% and 94% uh, subsequently. What is the outcome of using embagliflozin? Embagliflozin reduced the primary outcome, primary composite outcome of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure is significantly reduced by the using embagliflozin. And this is the dotted red line, as you see here, is uh, less than, uh, as you see, the hazard ratio is less than one, 0 0.75, and with confidence, 0.65 to 0.86, and this is the significant P value. Again, first and recurrent hospitalization for heart failure, hazard ratio is 0.7. This means that embagliflozin reduced as well, first and recurrent hospitalization for heart failure. And this was uh, stable among different pre specified subgroups. So the benefit of uh, the embagliflozin was uh, persistent despite difference in demographics. As you see here, diabetes or non-diabetic, non old or non-old, male or female, race, uh, baseline body mass index, usually it is beneficial in the lower body mass index less than 30, uh, reduced DGFR, it is more beneficial with, preserve, with preserved glomerular filtration rate. 
the hospitalization, cause of heart failure, and a lot of uh, specific subgroups, empagliflozin is beneficial. And this table summarizes the impact of empagliflozin on a primary and a secondary outcome. If we look at primary outcome, composite, here 15% and here 21%, this means 60% reduction by the use of empagliflozin. Hospitalization for heart failure, here 10%, 15%, significant reduction. Cardiovascular deaths, 7.6 in placebo, 8.1. Uh, this, this was not significant because confidence is exceed one here. So this is the, uh, the composite outcome and the hospitalization for heart failures were significantly reduced by the use of impagliflozin. For the secondary outcome, I am very careful about the kidney composite renal outcome, including the duration of GFR, needing replacement therapy, all these were 1.60% in impagliflozin treated patients in comparison to 3.1%. This means that composite renal outcome is reduced by 50 to 50%. This means that impagliflozin was very beneficial to the kidney outcome, which I am uh, interested in. So to conclude this uh, trial, impagliflozin was associated with a lower combined risk of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure than placebo and with a slower progressive decline in renal function in patients with chronic heart failure and a reduced ejection fraction, regardless of the presence or absence of diabetes. A very nice study. The second trial, this is DABA heart failure. The initial results of this trial was published in November 2019 in the New England Journal of Medicine. Again, it is DABA gliflozin and the prevention of adverse outcome in heart failure. Uh, in this study, uh, 4,744 patients with NEHA class two, three, or four heart failure and ejection fraction 40 or less to receive either DABA uh, 10 milligram or placebo. It is double blind placebo randomized controlled trial to more than 2,000 patients in each arm and the diabetes is uh, less than 42% in each arm. This means that majority of patients were non-diabetic. Again, the DABA was beneficial associated with significant improvement of the patient outcome irrespective to the demographic the patient has. Here in this study, which is very recent, addressed the results of DABA heart failure in concordance with the use of diuretics. So dabagliflozin and diuretic use in patients with heart failure and reduce the ejection fraction in DABA heart failure study. Uh, and as you see, no diuretic in 700 patients, less than 40 milligram frisomide or equivalent dose, 1,300, 40 milligram, 1,300, 1,200 more than 40, and any dose, 3,800 patients. So this is the analysis uh, of the use of dabagliflozin for heart failure patients was stable and persistent, irrespective of the demographics that the patient has, uh, either using diuretic or not. This means that the dabagliflozin was independent on the use of, of diuretics. Here I have a question. Why hematocrit increases? And in the in, it increases mainly in the DABA treated group. Why? Is it because of diuresis? The answer was not because of the diuresis. It, seem, it seems that dabagliflozin stimulates erythropoiesis, stimulates erythropoietin, or reduces hepcidin with a potential effect on erythropoiesis of these patients. This is a small study, small because it includes few number of patients, 23 patients. It is received a CHF trial, renal and cardiovascular effect of sodium glucose co-transporter to inhibitor in combination with loop diuretics in patients with type 2 diabetes and chronic heart failure. Uh, it was a randomized double blind placebo controlled crossover trial, a very nice design, but the major problem is the number of patients included in this study. Where the old patients uh, had 
type 2 diabetes and heart failure with reduced digestion fraction, taking re regular loop diuretics who were randomized to impagliflozin 25 milligram once a daily or placebo for six weeks. With a two week washout period, the primary um, outcome was a change in 24 hour urinary volume from baseline at week six. And this is how the design of the study was. Impagliflozin versus placebo, look at the number of patients, 12 patients here, 11 patients here for the first phase, then two week wash, washout period and then crossing placebo uh, receives the impagliflozin and vice versa, this is the design. What is the most important results? What's new in this study? Don't forget it, is, it includes small number, small sample size, few patients. In patients with heart failure and type 2 diabetic, patients taking regular loop diuretics, embagliflozin caused a significant increase in urine volume at both day three and week six compared to placebo, as well as significant increase in electrolyte free water clearance. So there was non-significant increase in atheresis with EMBA at the day three. This was absent by day six. So what are the clinical implications of this study? These results suggest that may have an advantageous diuretic profile in patients with type two diabetes and heart failure, in addition to loop diuretics with only a short transient net releases. Let us go to the last part of this presentation, which is the meta-analysis for the Emperor reduced and DABA heart failure trial that appeared in the Lancet by the end of August. As you see, this is the demographic characteristics of both trials. Please look at them because they are combined in this table, either EMBA placebo, DABA versus placebo. You can look at the number of patients, age, male and females, NEHA classification. Here, I would like to stress upon the uh, pro-BNB level was higher in the embryo reduced. So it seemed that heart failure was worsened in the embryo, severe heart failure uh, in the embryo than the DABA. The, and here, the ejection fraction 27, 27, 31, 30. So it seemed that patients uh, in the embryo trial uh, well, uh, we're suffering from a little bit severer uh, heart failure. This is the medic medication, the uh, diabetes percentage in each arm, the use of medications, ACE inhibitor, ARBs, mineral corticoid receptor antagonists, and the ARNI. Please fix this table and look at the all demographics. What meta-analysis added, it, just, it tries to increase the power of each of the study. So the, uh, when the two trials are taken together, the meta-analysis shows that beyond doubt, use of sodium glucose co-transporter to inhibitors, either EMBA or DABA gliflozin, EMBA in EMBRO and DABA in DABA heart failure, was associated with significant, as you see the diamond here, is less than uh, one, uh, less all-cause mortality, less cardiovascular death, so it is beneficial for mortality and cardiovascular death. For hospitalization for heart failure, significantly reduced. For hospitalization, this is for heart failure or cardiovascular death or heart failure alone. As you see, the use of sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitor was significantly associated with less hospitalization. And as I am a nephrologist, kidney outcome was significantly reduced. If we take the results together, the diamond is here. This means that sodium glucose co transporter 2 inhibitors are beneficial for the kidney. And then if we take the demographics of the patients, irrespective of the demographics, uh, the presence or absence of diabetes, again, the using of sodium glucose uh, co transporter 2 inhibitors was beneficial if we take the, uh, the two trials together. Uh, the gender, uh, use of uh, ARNI or not, again, all the demographic criteria. Here, uh, either estimate GFR less than 60, the use is beneficial, or above 60, the use is beneficial. So, respective to the demographics, the patients have the use of uh, uh, sodium glucose co transporter inhibitors, either EMBA and EMBRO, 
and DABA in DABA heart failure were beneficial to the patients. And the side effect profile that was demonstrated clearly in this table was tolerated. So their use was tolerated. So the implication based on this meta-analysis, the evidence supports the use of sodium glucose cotransferase to inhibitors, EMBA or DABA, as an integral part of a comprehensive therapy that improves the events free survival of patients with heart failure and the reduced ejection fraction. So this is a good news for patients with heart failure. And this is the one of the review article uh, reflecting the, uh, the state of art review, clinical benefit of cardiorenal effects of sodium glucose cotransferase inhibitor. If you look carefully to this figure, I like it because use of sodium glucose cotransferase inhibitors is beneficial for diabetes and metabolism glucose lowering, blood weight reduction, blood pressure reduction, for myocardial infarction, for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, as I demonstrated in the two trials, renal outcome, urine albumin, creatinine ratio, and estimated GFR and the current vascular death. What uh, uh, does need further evidence is the use of sodium glucose cotransferase to inhibitor in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Still, there are ongoing studies or in acute decompensating heart failure still we don't have an evidence for their benefit. But for coronary heart failure, they are beneficial. Again, this is the last slide. 2020 expert consensus decision pathway on novel therapies for cardiovascular risk reduction in patients with type 2 diabetes. We have two classes of drugs, sodium glucose cotransporter transporter inhibitors and glucagon like blood donor receptor agonist. The, this, this is the... Uh, if you look at the MACE prevention, both of them are uh, potent. For heart failure prevention, sodium glucose cotransporter to inhibitors is more important and associated with significant reduction of heart failure. Weight loss, glucagon blood one receptor antagonist is more potent. Renal disease progression, I am a nephrologist, sodium glucose cotransporter to inhibitor is more potent. So for heart failure, and CKD or deterioration of kidney function, sodium glucose cotransferase inhibitors, uh, the use of them is more beneficial for our patients. Uh, I'd like to stop here. Uh, and I think the use of novel therapies, uh, it changed the management of patients with heart failure uh, to this uh, extent. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any comment, please don't hesitate to write as a commentary on the YouTube video. Thank you very much. Hoping you the best and goodbye.